My cousin Troy asked this question when he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at age 5. Troy is 19 now, and there's been no phone call. My family has depended on STEM jobs to advance in diabetic research for 67 years, since my grandfather was diagnosed at age 22. Over the years, this disease has been passed down to my uncle, my cousin, and possibly even me, my sister, or any one of my nine other cousins. Well, I've lived with diabetes 67 years, and I think it's been a fairly normal 67 years, not much different from most of uh, my friends that, that have not been diabetic. This accomplishment has put him in the top 60 longest living diabetics in the Pittsburgh region. I feel very uh, lucky, very fortunate, but uh, that's just the way it's been. Though they've come a long way in the advancement of medical treatment for diabetic patients, my grandpa still maintains his blood sugar by taking shots every day, each one injecting the correct amount of insulin into his blood. I give myself shots four times a day, once before each meal, and one before bedtime. The diabetic gene is passed down through the generations, although researchers believe that an environmental factor triggers it. The next person in my family to be diagnosed was my Uncle Steve. I have had diabetes for 29 years. I was diagnosed with diabetes when I was 16 years old, and I was a junior in high school. Unlike my grandpa, Uncle Steve has abandoned the shots and upgraded to the pump. I put insulin into my body using a, a insulin pump, and an insulin pump is a device which uh, slowly injects insulin through a plastic insertion um, that I can insert in any area in my body. After my uncle and grandfather were both diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, it came as a surprise when they found out that Troy had it too, in November of 1999. Like my uncle, Troy also uses an insulin pump. I use an insulin pump to administer doses of insulin five to ten times, I mean, whenever I eat, five to ten times a day maybe. Though Troy deals with his diabetes, he doesn't deny the restrictions it has put on his life. After 13 years of having it, it's just, I mean, it's constant, it's always there. You sort of develop a relationship with it almost, like, whenever I talk about diabetes, it's like an annoying friend that always follows me around, and I hate it. <laughs> it's impossible to function fully normal with, with, as a diabetic, whether you ignore it and just try to act normal. Anyways, you can't do it because your blood sugar is going to get high and it's going to start affecting you. It gets low too and, and you, can't even, you can't even function if your blood sugar is low. So, no, I, I can't live normally with diabetes. No, it's not possible. I think that's the point of, of research though, is they're trying to make people be able to live as normally as possible. In a healthy body, cells in the pancreas called the islet of Langerhorn cells secrete a hormone called insulin which basically turns all the food you eat into energy for your body. But how does this relate to diabetes? We know that it's what we call an autoimmune disease, which means the body does attack their own cells. And for whatever reason, um, they start to sense the islet cells as being a foreign substance that they should attack. So there are antibodies that develop and they start to attack these islet cells and after you've lost 50 percent or more of them then you start having not adequate insulin to control your blood sugars. Because the pancreas doesn't have enough islet of Langerhorn cells to manufacture insulin, patients have to constantly monitor their blood sugar. This is one of the main problems with being a diabetic because of all the work it takes to maintain a normal blood sugar. But with the number of STEM jobs growing and the robust medical research environment in the Pittsburgh area, researchers are making it easier for diabetics to have a more normal life and every day are getting closer to finding a cure. It's certainly been the subject of a tremendous amount of research. We learn more all the time about genes in general and how they work and how they are triggered. With all of the research that's been done on genetic diseases and immunological disorders, I, I think we will find a cure in our lifetime.